In this recording, we will look at the trapezoidal rule, which is an example of a method of numerical integration. That is, it is an approximate method of calculating a definite integral from A to B of a particular function. And it is called the trapezoidal rule because we work this out by summing the area of a series of trapezoids. And the first thing we do is the interval AB that we're integrating over. We start by dividing that into n intervals of equal length. Keep on like that, where each of those intervals has length delta x. And that means that the total distance from A to B will be B minus A, since we're assuming B is greater than A here if we're integrating from A to B. And that means if we're dividing this distance B minus A into n equal intervals, delta x must be B minus A divided by n. And then if we consider the graph that we're looking at over the interval we're working with, so suppose we were looking at a region like that, let's say, and just for an example, suppose our first couple of intervals are there, we then construct a trapezoid above each interval. That is, we go to the point which corresponds to the value of the function at the start of the interval, the point that represents the value of the function at the end of an interval, and draw a straight line between them, giving a trapezoid in each case. And we would continue to do that for all of these intervals. And the idea is that the ith of these trapezoids would have area equal to one half times the length delta x times the height, which is represented by f of xi minus 1 plus f of xi, where this part here, that point there, would be the f of xi minus 1. This point here would be f of xi and we're getting the area of that trapezoid. And because an integral from a to b of f of x is the area bounded by f of x and the x-axis between a and b, it follows that summing up the areas of all these trapezoids will give us an approximate value of the area under the curve or the approximation of the integral from a to b of f of x. And adding up the areas of these trapezoids, it can be shown that we get the integral from a to b of f of x is approximately b minus a divided by 2n times the value of the function at x naught, where x naught is basically a. That is the point at which we're starting from with our interval. Then plus 2 times f of x1 where x1 will be starting point a plus one lot of the length delta x plus two times f of x2, continuing on in this way to two times f of x n minus one, and finally plus f of x n, where f of x n is the value of the function at the final point b. So f of x n is f of b, f of x naught is f of a, and these other ones in between here are found by adding delta x each time to get each successive x1, x2 up to xn minus 1. So let's see how this works in practice by doing a specific example. Suppose we wanted to estimate the integral from 3 to 5 of 1 divided by x squared using the trapezoidal rule with n equals 4. So here, starting point a is equal to 3, the finished point of our interval b is 5, n is 4, and in this case the function f of x that we're looking at is 1 divided by x squared. So the first step will be to work out what are our actual successive values x0, x1 up to xn that we're actually working with. And as we said before, x0 is just the starting point a, so here that is 3, and xn is the finish point, b, which in this case is 5. So what we're basically wanting to do, because n is equal to 4, we're basically wanting to divide 
this distance from 3 to 5 into four equal sized intervals. Obviously the first step is we need to know the width of each of those intervals, delta x, which we saw is b minus a divided by the number of intervals, or in this case 5 minus 3 divided by 4, which works out in this case to be equal to 2 divided by 4 is 0 0.5. So what that means is that if we're going to divide this up into four equal intervals, each time we will need to go up in steps of 0 0.5, meaning x1 will be 3 plus 0 0.5, which is 3.5, adding another loss of delta x is 0 0.5, gives 4 for x2, 4.5 for x3, and then adding another 0.5 sure enough gets us to the end point 5. So these are the values at which we are going to want to evaluate f of x in order to help us calculate our integral. So in this case, integral from a to b of f of x, we saw that's the integral from 3 to 5, of 1 on x squared with respect to x. So that's approximately equal to b minus a, which was 5 minus 3, divided by 2n, which is 2 times 4, times, and I'll do this in two steps, f of x naught will be f of 3, plus 2f of x1, that will be 2 times f of 3.5 plus 2 f of x2 will be 2 times the value of the function f at 4 plus continuing on all of these are multiplied by 2 till the last one so 2 times f of 4.5 and then 5 is xn so again it's just 1 f of xn so plus f of 5 so that will be how the formula applies here. And what is f of x? Well, f of x is just the 1 on x squared. So that means this is going to be 5 minus 3 is just 2, divided by 2 times 4 is 8. And f of 3, for instance, if f of x is 1 divided by x squared, for instance, applying that rule to the function at 3 will be 1 divided by 3 squared for instance. So f of 3 is 1 divided by 3 squared plus 2 times f of 3.5 that will be 1 divided by 3.5 squared. Similarly 2f of 4 is 2 divided by 2 times 1 divided by 4 squared plus 2 times 1 divided by 4.5 squared and lastly, f of 5 is 1 divided by 5 squared. And working these out, you can verify to four decimal places for these fractions in here. 2 eighths is just 0.25, but then 1 divided by 3 squared, that's a ninth, which to four decimal places is 0 0.1111. 2 times 1 divided by 3.5 squared becomes 0.1633 to four decimal places. 2 divided by 1 on 4, 2 times 1 on 4 squared, that's just an eighth, which is 0.125. This next one, 2 times 1 divided by 4.5 squared is 0 0.0988. And 1 divided by 25 for the last one is just 0.04. And working all of that out, it becomes 0.25 times this sum in here becomes 0.5382, which works out to be 0.1346, correct to four decimal places. So therefore, using the trapezoidal rule, by dividing into n equals four intervals, we've found that the integral from 3 to 5 of 1 divided by x squared is approximately equal to 0.1346. And again, think visually about what this integral represents. If we're looking at our graph, y equals 1 divided by x squared has this general type of appearance. 
So we've been finding an approximation for the area bounded by this curve and the positive x-axis in this case since 3 and 5 are both positive numbers we've been looking at the area between this curve and the x-axis between 3 and 5 but we have been approximating that by dividing this area here into four equal subintervals and then getting the areas of the trapezoids in each of those intervals. That's basically what we have been doing here. And in fact, just for general interest, and you might want to verify this yourself using the more standard laws of integration, the actual exact value of the integral from 3 to 5 of 1 on x squared is 2 fifteenths, which to four decimal places is 0.1333. So you can see that in fact our integral, as you might expect, since we're approximating areas with trapezoids, our answer is slightly different. And in fact, the larger the value of n, that is the more subintervals we divided our region into, the closer the value of the integral would get to the actual true answer.